Welcome back to All The Gear. Today on All The Gear, we are going to age whiskey, rum, brandy, bourbon, any white spirit that is aged in an oak barrel, we are going to age, not in years, but in days. And we're gonna age it in such a way that it tastes like it's been aged for years. Not only are we going to make 30 minute and 15 hour whiskey, we are also going to make a two hour gin infusion utilizing my latest recipe and the ultrasonic nuclear infusion method to speed up the process to just two hours. I will leave timestamps in the description for those that are just interested in the gin making so you can jump forwards and backwards to the part that you're interested in. What you'll need, you'll need wood chips, You'll need this. This is actually white spirit. It is not whiskey. It is not rum. It's not brandy. It's not bourbon. At this point, this is vodka, clear spirit, moonshine, or as I like to call it, hooch. The reason we are using hooch is because I wanna start from a neutral base, neutral spirit, and we can build our flavor profile from there. The magical technology that we'll be using is this, this is an ultrasonic jewelry cleaner. It is a rather large volume ultrasonic jewelry cleaner and I'm gonna open it right now. This was very cheap. I think this was, well, cheap is relative, about 200 and something bucks, but for a piece of commercial equipment, not bad. Especially when you're paying 200 and something bucks for a bottle of aged spirits. Lid, there it is. <laughs> There's our basket and there is our ultrasonic cleaner. And internally, it just looks like a bain-marie tub. And you have on the front here, a tap, which allows it to drain from the bottom. Look at that. What I'm very interested in seeing is how much we can fit into our basket and whether we even really need to use the basket at all. Next item that we'll need, these. These are 825 mil preserving jars. That just means that they can be heated up. Um, you can autoclave them or put them in a pressure cooker. And we just wanna see how many of these we can fit in our basket. Oh, come on. It's just too small. Is that gonna vibrate? We will find out. If I can do it like that, I'm reading the instructions. Okay, I feel like I've done an adequate job of skimming those instructions. So, you need this ultrasonic cleaner at least three quarters full. And with six jars in it, it's gonna be mostly jar. So, we're gonna prepare the jars first. To prepare our clear spirit, I'm gonna lay out six jars. So, I've done a little bit of research on the internet and there are a few resources in the form of people that have had a tinker around with this kind of technology. Now, one of the major resources was still its videos. Thank you for that. But I've been trolling around looking at different ways of acid esterification. Today, we're also going to be using really good quality Manuka honey. It is just this incredibly rich, the most incredible honey. And some people online have been suggesting it's used to bring some of the flavor through from the transformation stage of an oak aging. Here we are mostly performing the extraction of the oak, but what we actually want to achieve with the acids and the honey is acid esterification, as well as utilizing acids and the complex flavors in the honey to bring out the different flavors within the aged spirit. What we're going to do now is char some wood chips. Oak chips. <laughs> These are about 825 mil jars. Per liter, we want 44 grams of wood chip. So we're gonna go for about 33 grams and go for a lighter spirit to start with. I'm going to measure out, we're gonna do three different chars. We've got six bottles here. If I do 66 grams of no char, 66 grams of full char and 66 grams of half char, we should get a nice rounded flavor profile because at different chars, there are different flavors compounds created within the oak and I want a nice rounded flavor. All up, they'll all be getting 33 grams 
of oak, but they'll be getting all three chars. That's 67. That is good enough for me. So this is gonna be the full char. What does he mean by full char? Well, I don't even know, and we're about to find out. Oh, this is an incredible smell, by the way. <laughs> so, so each of these are gonna get, yeah, 11 grams each, like so. All right, lightly charred. And now I'm just gonna measure out um, non-charred. So just 11 grams, no charring at all. All our jars are filled with the appropriate amounts of oak. And now we can add in our honey and acids. For this run, we're going to do one lot with citric acid and one lot without citric acid. You can also use tartaric and acetic acid. The tartaric acid will give a tangy flavor and the acetic acid will give a fruity pear flavor. This is according to Stillett's experiments. I'm actually going to go with citrus, which is meant to give a malt flavor. I like that idea because I, I want it to be a bit more like a whiskey. Uh, I want that malt flavor to come through. I'm an Australian, so I know exactly what Milo tastes like. Now, I'm also gonna be using honey. For each of our jars, it's half gram of citric acid for every 250 mils. So I'll be using one and a half grams per jar. I'll also be using one and a half grams of honey, and then I'm gonna double that for one of the jars, three grams of honey for another jar. I'm gonna label the jars, and then I'm gonna measure it out. So this is what we're looking like. The honey and base spirit mix at the front. At the back, our citric acid and honey mixes. This is going to allow me to taste the difference between something that's just got the base spirit and, and something that's just got the honey against our citric acid and honey mix. Let's add in our citric acid and honey. Citric acid first. These are all 1.5 grams of citric acid. So this is just bulk citric acid, really cheap from Kegland. Head to Kegland and use my code for a discount. The honey is going to be quite interesting because it's sticky. So, 1.5, how good. Now we can fill up our jars. So this is the point in the recipe where you can add in your desired spirit. So this is kind of the point of difference, the point at which my tastings may vary from yours if you're using say a rum spirit or a whiskey spirit. However, the baseline is this, essentially, because this is just a clear spirit with no flavor coming through from the wash. So fill them up with whatever clear spirit you're going to use, and we can see how many people we piss off by calling this process aging. <laughs> and we can add on our lids. And I'm doing these up all the way. I'll let you know if I loosen them off. I don't think I'm going to though. And you can see the honey at the base of that one stuck to the bottom. I'm not even gonna bother agitating it because that will be agitated enough by the ultrasonic cleaner. So let's get to setting up the cleaner. So we'll plug it in, the fan's word up, and I'm gonna load it up. So. And I'm going to fill this with water. So this is three and a half liters. It took two and a half liters. I need to set it. We're going to set the temperature to 65 and we're going to set the time. Ooh, that's going to be annoying if I have to turn it on every bloody 30 minutes. Let's turn the heater on while I try to figure this out. So that's on. Uh, I think this is only going to go 30 minutes at a time. Okay, let's try that. Ooh, it makes a horrible noise. I'm glad I don't have these in my house. Okay, so the interesting part is going to be now, what happens if I unplug it or turn it off and then turn it back on? So, turn it back on, resets to off. I really would have liked this to automatically turn back on. So this is quite annoying. 
I am going to write down every time I turn on um, this machine. And we're gonna try and turn it on for 12 hours. That's 24 times. <laughs> That's fine. Hopefully, that is actually going to give us the nuclear cycles. Now, it doesn't really bother me because I'm in and out of the shed a fair bit. This is going to kind of give the oak sort of irregular cycles and cooling. Time number one, I guess. On. What a noise. Eh? Okay, so this is actually quite interesting. Um, it's only been on one cycle. Have a look at that color. That's incredible. You can see the bubbles coming up from the wood chips. That is an incredible color. The honey is darker, and that's across the board too. You can see honey on the right, citric acid on the left. There is, it's way darker. I don't know where that is. Oh, I open it and bubbles. <laughs> Look at that. How interesting. Yep, it does it with both. This is just plain. It's 40 degrees, so it's not too hot. It's definitely aged. That's delicious. That's, that's half an hour. I don't know if I want to age that anymore. That's incredible. That is unbelievable. All right, I want to try the um, the honey. Three grams of honey. All right, well, I was going to do this experiment for a long time. I was going to do it for the full 12 hours. But in one 30-minute session, I have gotten to the point where I actually want to cool these down and I want to, I want to assess them when they're cold. So we're going to turn this off. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours and we've only had it on one cycle. So it heated up and the ultrasonic vibration was on for half an hour. I'd say that it only just got to heat by the time it cut off. I'm very interested to see uh, what it tastes like because look at that color. So I think we'll start with the blank slate. I'm really interested to see what a half an hour aged spirit tastes like. It's very oaky. I'm just getting oak, which is, I mean, that's what I expected. It's nice. I can't decide whether it's harsh or it's smooth. It's like a middle ground, really. It's exactly what you expect. It's really well rounded because all of those different char levels. So I'm getting like a little bit of vanilla. There's like a, there's a bit of nuttiness there. Interesting. I don't know if you can see this, but the citric acid version is lighter. Yeah, it's lighter across the board. Yeah, something's there. Now, I don't know why this is, but it's not as oaky. There's like a, a tartness to it. It's like a gin, not like a gin. There's some gin notes to it. I don't think it's malty. I'd go almost, I'd go more fruity. Okay, it's like tangy. I'm interested to see how that plays with the honey. I've now tried them all. The 1.5 grams of citric and 1.5 grams of honey, I didn't really like actually. The three grams of honey was nice, but I can't tell if it's just because I like the honey flavor. The 1.5 grams of citric and three grams of honey was also okay, but I'm not really happy with any of them. I think we're gonna have to continue this all the way up to the 12 hours. So uh, I'm gonna keep that tally running and we're going to try and get these jars through the full 24 cycles. Let's get on with it. Put them all back. And turn the noise machine on. Gross. Okay, so it's been about two weeks. It took me a week to get 24 cycles done and I've let them sit for another week but that's plainly because I've been busy. So all of the aged spirit has now had a full 12 hours in the ultrasonic cleaner with the heat on. There's going to be four that I'm concentrating on. We're going to be concentrating on and you can see the color here. 
it is dark. <laughs> Look at that. That is really, really dark spirit. First up, we've got the baseline. There we have a really dark spirit. Okay, that is really mellow oak smell. Like that's just delicious. Yep, I do like that. You know what? I actually think that has too much flavor. Like it's too oaky, it's overpowering. That's interesting. Okay, we're gonna put that one aside for a second. Honey, three grams of honey. Still overpowering, but it has a much more complex flavor. It, it doesn't taste like just oak. I can't particularly tell there's honey in there. I feel like it's interacting. I like that. So 1.5 grams of citric acid. Ooh, it's different on the nose. Like bouquet. Ooh, I wanna say more metallic. Yeah, more metallic. No, no, I'm not a fan. Uh, citric plus honey. Ooh. There's some stuff floating around in it and that's in none of the other ones, which is strange. It's like sweet metallic. I don't mind that actually. Quite interestingly, I actually prefer the stuff that came out of the 30 minute whiskey. The light flavor of the 30 minute cycle aged spirit. If I were to pick a preference, I would actually go for the three grams of honey. The reason that the three grams of honey jar has a little bit less than the others is because it's the one that I've been tasting as the aging has occurred, purely because it's actually my favorite without citric acid. That gave some really nice, mellow, but complex flavors. 30 minutes was plenty to give it enough color. Here I'm using 40% alcohol. Uh, you could actually pull this up to cask strength, so like 50, 55, and then water it back down with water and you would get a more mellow uh, product. And that is generally what distillers will do. They'll add water to bring the percentage down to bottle strength. This experiment has actually given me a really good idea of how the oak flavors other spirits, because I've now got a baseline understanding of the flavors at play with the wood chips. Probably wouldn't recommend the citric acid. I don't think I'll be playing with that in the future. The honey is a very interesting idea and of the 12 hour ultrasonic aged spirit, I am gonna re recommend the three grams of honey. It's lifted it out of overpowering oak and it's added a, a tiny bit of sweetness, but mostly actually like complexity. It's very easy to drink, honestly. There might be a sweet spot between the 30 minutes and the 12 hours that I didn't get to try. And I would actually age it to your taste by aging it for 30 minutes, trying it, then aging it for say three hours and trying it, and then aging it for six, 12, however much effort you wanna put in. I don't think that the 12 hours is necessary. I, I think that this is overkill. We could probably get a really nice result in like, I don't know, three hours. And this video is going to be built upon in the future with whiskies and something that I'm especially excited about is gin. Because if we can speed up the infusion process from 36 hours and do it in like half an hour, I think we can really revolutionize the way that we infuse gin. It's like half an hour process. I could just make gin right now. Okay, bonus segment. Using my gin recipe, we're going to make gin uh, in half an hour. What have we got here? 500 mils of clear spirit, hooch. I'm halving this recipe, okay? So 16.5 grams of juniper berries, four grams of coriander seed, one cardamom pod, 0.35 grams of angelica root, four grams of dried orange zest, and two medium-sized horseradish leaves. And as you can see, completely clear, I'm gonna put this into our ultrasonic cleaner, fill it up, turn it on. I don't particularly want the temperature to be too high because I don't wanna cook 
the ingredients. That's not part of the process. So I'm actually gonna turn the temperature, 27 degrees anyway. We're just gonna turn it on for 30 minutes. And here we go. Oh, what a horrific noise. I can actually see bubbles forming on the bottom as it's vibrating, which is extremely cool. So it literally just finished and you can see we've already got color to our gin. The temperature's actually gone up to 37 and it's only set at 27. So this is heating it. I'd say that the vibrations are heating it. There we go. Woo. So interestingly enough, we have a really gin aroma. Ooh, that's delicious. <laughs> that is, that's gin. We're gonna go again though. I reckon by the rate at which this looks like it's aging, I reckon it's gonna take about two hours. Back in we go. And we'll have a look at it in a little bit. Uh, have a look at that. That is two hours. It's completely different. I'll show you a B-roll right now of the gin that I made. And it's a completely different color. It's like a cloudy gin. Don't know if I like it more, don't know if I like it less, but it's actually quite hot. Ah, what do we got here? Holy, 52 degrees Celsius. So the ultrasonic cleaning is definitely heating up our gin, it's heating up the water in general. I don't even think it needs to be heated. Oh, uh, sorry. Oh my Lord, that's hot. Ah, uh, we're back to the urine color. It's more of like a, it's definitely not like a hydrated urine color. There we go, look at that. It is hot. Oh, it smells delicious. That's nice, that is delicious. Okay, um, but there is a problem here. It's still hot. Realistically, at home, you would just let this sit, allow the flavors to infuse more, but I, I wanna give you the experience of what it's like after two hours of infusion. So I'm going to strain out the flavors so we actually know what's actually happening here and not what's going on in like 24 hours once, I've, once it's been sitting. We actually just wanna know what the two hour infusion is gonna be like. I have spilled so much. So not aging at all, just cooling. Okay, it's been about 12 hours. Um, we haven't lost really any of the cloudiness. It's pretty much the same look. Oh, yes. I will say that the smell is identical to the last gin that I made with the infusion method. And so is the flavor. It is just a really delicious juniper forward gin. I'm really happy with this recipe and I've had some really good feedback from a lot of mates. And this hasn't changed the recipe. It's an identical gin to the one that I created. Fortunately, I don't have any of it left because it was so good. But I do wanna try ice, tonic. Cheers. Perfect. <laughs> Two hour gin. How ridiculous. Now, I don't care what you say, whether or not this is truly aging, this is truly infusing. And the usefulness of this technology is unquestionable. Whether you're a traditionalist or more pragmatic, I think this technology can fit into anyone's workflow in an experimental sense. You can use this to speed up infusions so that you can test different flavors in like no time at all. And because you can utilize different jar sizes, you can test like 15 different styles of infusion at once, whether it is aging infusion with oak and other more traditional materials, or whether it's infusing different botanicals into alcohol. It also allows you to infuse essential oils, botanicals, and other flavor compounds that you may not be using for alcohol, but you might be using for cooking. So for instance, if you wanted to infuse chili into alcohol and use that chili to flavor other things, this would 
speed up the process of infusion and you can create your essential oils in that way. And then you can distill them down and this will speed up that process exponentially. It's really all about thinking outside the box of how you can implement this and utilizing the shortening of infusion to create products that would usually take a lot longer to create. So I definitely don't want you to think of this as a replacement for traditional aging so much as a tool for the exploration of flavors and infusions into the various cocktails of flavors and aromas that we want within our cocktails. I hope you enjoyed this episode of All The Gear and I hope I left you with some more ideas. Cheers, I'll see you next time. And we're definitely gonna be playing some more with this bad boy.